And I'm Dina. Welcome to The Grim Curriculum. Thank you all for joining us again today. Dear listeners, it's that time again. We are visiting another unsolved mystery. And this one is honestly a tough one. I mean, they all are, but this one really hit. Oh, seriously. So, okay, I found this case on an old episode of Unsolved Mysteries. It's season five for anyone who's interested. And I couldn't stop thinking about her. Like, I was glued to the episode and I was looking forward to the update at the end that they do sometimes. But I was kind of surprised that there wasn't one. So, yeah. I, right? Like, it, you kind of expect it, especially one like this, because it's like, well, there should be an answer. Mm-hmm. And so after the episode, I looked up her name and it looks like there haven't actually been many updates to the case since she went missing in 1983. This one was a new one for me. I hadn't heard of it before, which is wild because I feel like I don't think I've heard anybody else really cover it. And it pulled me right in once I started to dig a little deeper. Honestly, it's hard to hear about this case and not feel that way. I think we can both agree that there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. Absolutely. And as always, at the end, we would love to hear your guys' thoughts. So if you haven't already, make sure you follow us on whatever platform you're listening on. Turn on those notifications and leave us a comment telling us what you think after the show. All right, let's get into it. Hollywood has always had a dark side to it, and there are a lot of unsolved cases that are tied to it, especially ones involving young actresses trying to earn their place at the top. Today, we are covering the disappearance of Tammy Lynn Leapert. Tammy Lynn was an up-and-coming actress who had enjoyed an incredibly successful career in the beauty pageant circuit as a young child and teen. As she approached adulthood, she began finding work as an actress in various roles. She started to exhibit a change in behavior after she claimed she had seen something she wasn't supposed to. On July 6, 1983, she got into a car with a friend of hers and was never seen again. There are many theories about what happened to Tammy Lynn Leapert. We're going to explore those today, as well as who she was as a person. Tammy Lynn was born on February 5, 1965 in Rockledge, Florida. From a very early age, she was extremely outgoing and she could command the attention of any room. She began performing and competing in beauty pageants early on, and by the age of four, she had already won her first title. I did an essay on child beauty pageants in school ages ago, and the idea of this has always just kind of baffled me. Like, I just don't get it. I don't either. I'm kind of glad that I don't get it, though, because I don't want to. Yeah, yes. I'm glad (laughs) that I personally didn't grow up in a family where this was a thing. But I and correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I don't think they're as big of a thing in the UK and Canada. Or it doesn't I I, or maybe I've just never been around that scene. So I've never seen it. It seems like a very American thing to me. Like the show Todd Liz and Tiara's came out I feel like there's always then like the Canadian version or the British version that comes out shortly after and like vice versa right like British shows will pop up like the great British baking show and then there's the great Canadian Darn, I wanted to look it up because for some reason I thought they were illegal in the UK oh that would make sense Ugh, that's too bad damn that stuff gives me the heebie-jeebies more than some of the other things we talk about on this show Yeah, I don't like it at all because it's just the idea of making like very young children look like adults. Like think of like JonBenet Ramsey and how she had to wear like the teeth because if she was missing teeth, they had to be like, oh, no, you need a full set of adult teeth. Like, yep. And just the idea of then being judged for what they're capable of is sometimes as young as like three or four years old. It I don't know. It's it's just the the effort that goes. It's weird. I'm sorry. I, it's not for me at, at all. Actually, this will upset you really well. Uh, mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> um, no. I don't know if this has changed, but when I did do my essay, the young like the age start for pageants was as long as the child could sit up. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. And I mean, the babies weren't like in wigs and no. Stuff, I, would, like, I, well, they're... I would hope not. Oh my god! Still, it's just weird to be like, this baby is beautiful. This baby is not. Yeah, it's meeting a particular standard that we have set. Like, uh, I don't know. It's like, it Maybe... sounds like a dog show. I don't know. It's just yes. I can go on about this for days, you guys. I'm sorry. Absolutely, I don't like we, it. we won't go too much further because it's not the entire idea of this story. In <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about this on extra credit one day. I don't. Know. Yes, we should absolutely. 
And you know what? We know quite a few of you are probably going to agree with us on all of this. So just don't worry. We're with you. We agree. It, um, it's just odd. Yeah. But that all being said, uh, <laughs> child beauty pageant bashing aside, uh, Tammy Lynn did legitimately seem to enjoy it. Apparently, she commanded the room the second she walked in and she was a natural winner. And if that isn't impressive enough, by the age of 16, she had won 280 of the 300 titles that she competed for. Her mother, Linda Curtis, served as her manager. Linda was a theatrical and modeling agent and had the full belief that her daughter had the potential to reach the top. She ran Galaxy Productions on Merritt Island and was known for having a clientele that often won large prizes in beauty and talent contests. Her daughter would be her greatest success. And for what it's worth, she was probably right about that because Tammy was incredibly proud of what she did and she would constantly strive for greatness and she wasn't afraid to work hard for it either. Honestly, it seems like up until a certain point of her life, all anyone had to say about her were positive things. She was a legitimately happy person who loved to bring joy to others. And it really seemed like everyone who met her legitimately loved her. She was actually also on the October 1978 cover of CoverGirl magazine, which is a pretty huge deal for someone of her age, especially. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. Seriously. So she seemed to be doing quite well for herself, and it looked like her career was just getting started. Eventually, Tammy landed herself a small part in the raunchy 80s comedy Spring Break. Yes, and fun fact for any of you who are familiar with the movie, it's actually rumored that it's her on the movie cover. After the filming for the movie had finished, members of the cast and crew all attended a large weekend party to celebrate. Tammy Lynn was eager to go. And she did. Tammy Lynn actually attended the party unchaperoned. And it seems like that is when everything changed. Those around her said that when she arrived home from her weekend trip, she was a completely different person. The once bubbly and happy Tammy Lynn was now withdrawn and paranoid. Her close friend, Wing Flanagan, who was like a brother to her, noticed the change. The two were really close and told each other everything. When he brought it up, she would laugh it off or change the subject. It didn't seem like she wanted to talk about it, despite how much he brought it up. Her mother noticed a difference in her, too. She stated that on one occasion, Tammy Lynn asked her what she would say if she told her that someone was trying to kill her. Her mom asked her why she would ever ask such a thing, and then finally asked her flat out if she thought that someone wanted to kill her, to which Tammy Lynn simply replied, yes. And that was only the beginning. Soon after that, she began to completely isolate herself, often spending days in her room. She stopped eating regularly, and she would often have emotional outbursts. Her paranoia only got worse, but things began to look up for Tammy when she was offered a part in the hit film Scarface. She accepted the role and moved to Miami, where she stayed with a close friend of the family, Walter Leibowitz. And apparently this is exactly what she needed. The change of scenery and her new job brought Tammy Lynn out of whatever she had been experiencing. Unfortunately, this didn't last long. Walter received a call from the casting director on the fourth day of filming. She had put him down as her emergency contact. And before we talk about this, I just wanted to chat about the scene that she did. So for those of you who are familiar with the movie Scarface, she plays the lady who distracts the lookout guys during the chainsaw scene. I've never seen the movie, I'm not going to lie, so I decided to look up this scene and I watched it and it's really bloody and it's super intense. I have also ashamedly never seen the movie, but I have seen this scene in like a compilation of like the like goriest gangster movie scenes or something like that. And it, yeah, it doesn't fuck around, that's for sure. No. So they were filming a part where someone gets shot and they had a ton of artificial blood spur out of him. So Tammy Lynn was watching them film the scene when this happened and she had an absolute breakdown. Okay, so to be fair, I do feel like being a part of a scene like this could be a little traumatizing if you've never done something like this before. Like, think of how people react during really hardcore, like, haunted houses and stuff. Like, yeah. it could be quite traumatizing. But... You kind of 
couple this with Tammy's already strange paranoid behavior and then you start to kind of wonder like what was she going through that this triggered her yeah definitely because it's very specific like she saw this and just completely broke down like to the point where they had to escort her off the set and into a trailer because she had become hysterical Walter spoke to her mother and told her that Tammy needed medical attention and that she probably also needed to talk to a sheriff or something. She legitimately believed that someone wanted to kill her, but who it was, she wouldn't say. Something interesting to note is that later, Walter would claim that Tammy Lynn had mentioned something to him about money laundering, but she wouldn't tell him any more. Tammy Lynn quit the job and moved back home with her mother. She also spoke to their local sheriff around this time, but made absolutely no mention of the fact that she thought someone was trying to kill her. By this point, Tammy Lynn seemed to kind of be all over the place. Sometimes she was almost like her old self, but more often than not, she was on edge and easily irritated. Then things began to get physical. On July 1st, 1983, Wing Flanagan visited. Things seemed normal until Tammy Lynn accidentally locked herself out of the house. She flew into a rage and started to accuse him of locking her out of the house. And then she began to break all of the windows. When she finally gained access, she began to attack Wing. Tammy's mom, Linda, was able to get her off of him and eventually she calmed down. But the reality of it at this point was that this was probably going to happen again and that next time they probably wouldn't be able to de-escalate the situation. And we also want to point out like Tammy Lynn is five foot four and 103 pounds at this point. Like she is teeny tiny. So the fact that she has this rage inside of her to the point where she's not only breaking windows in the house, like into the house, she's breaking in and now she's attacking someone that she absolutely loves like none of this makes sense not at all it's a complete complete 180 in personality tammy lynn was checked into a medical health center for 72 hours where multiple tests were run this showed that tammy had no drugs or alcohol in her system at all as far as everyone could tell there was no reason for tammy lynn to be acting this way however those close to her knew that something was terribly wrong Not too long after she was released, at 11 a.m. on July 6, she told her mom that she was going out for a bit. Linda Curtis reported that she was under the assumption that her daughter was simply heading out to the convenience store with a friend. The last words she would ever hear her daughter say would be, Bye, Mommy. I'll see you in a little bit, okay? And just like that, she was gone. So, okay, what do we know? Okay, so we know that she left that day with a friend of hers, a man named Keith. And as far as we know, he was the last person to see her alive. They drove down to Cocoa Beach, where it was reported that they had a verbal fight, possibly over some money or over the fact that she asked him to drive somewhere, but the actual reason is unknown. After she vanished, police questioned Keith, who told them that he dropped her off two blocks south of the Glass Bank in Cocoa Beach because she had demanded it. This would have been around 1 p.m. The area that he said he left her was pretty close to State Road A1A between 2nd Street North and 3rd Street North, which was the spot that people would often hitchhike. Many people thought that she may have been picked up by somebody. For five agonizing days, her mother and loved ones waited for Tammy Lynn to come home. She was usually incredibly punctual and respectful. She was then officially reported missing. So this is a huge thing to note. She wasn't the kind of person who would just run away. She was also very prim and proper, and her appearance mattered to her a lot. The day she left, her mother reported that her hair was an absolute mess and that she appeared disheveled, something that was not normal for her. Tammy Lynn was last seen wearing a blue denim skirt, a light blue shirt with flowers on the shoulders, and she was carrying a gray purse. Many early reports stated that she left the house barefoot, but those were proven to be completely untrue. So we do know that she left looking kind of unlike her usual self, but she did take some of her things with her. And honestly, this is super frustrating because that's all we know about the day she went missing. But we can't talk about things further without addressing some of the key people of interest. 
We aren't saying that all of them are suspects per se, and we're going to specify when we talk about each one of them if they are or not. So let's start with the last person that we know saw her, Keith. We want to specify that Keith was not considered a suspect. However, he was never properly interrogated. Investigators attempted to meet with him on two separate occasions, but he cancelled both of them. That being said, he wasn't looked at very heavily due to the fact that he didn't have a previous criminal record. What's interesting is that Tamulin's mother claimed that they didn't investigate him as a suspect, but they claimed that they did and that they cleared him. They also mentioned that he owed Tammy some money, but he said that he gave it to her. Keith told investigators that he believed she had run away from home because she was so unhappy there. She had confided in him in the past and even told him that she was so scared for her life that she was sleeping with a knife under her pillow. He also claimed that her paranoia got to the point where she refused to accept food or drinks from people. The day before she vanished, Tammy Lynn spent some time with her close friend, Rick Adams. She trusted him and she told him that she believed that someone was going to kill her because she had seen something that she wasn't supposed to. The two ended up spending some time at the Rockville Evangel Temple, where he said Tammy Lynn cried harder than he had ever seen someone cry in his entire life. Something had clearly devastated her. They made plans to visit the church again the next day. When he dropped her off at her house, she told him that she loved him and that she may need to go away for a little bit. He assumed that she meant she was going to be relocating for another movie role and didn't think much of her comment. When he called her the next day to confirm that she still wanted to go to the church with him, he found out that she was missing. Rick Adams was not interviewed or considered a suspect. So who are the actual suspects in this case? Well, there are two main ones. The first one, Christopher Wilder. Oh my god. Okay, so this guy is one hell of a character and not in a good way. This is one of those humans masquerading as literal garbage situations. Yeah, so Christopher Wilder was known to police due to the fact that he was linked to at least 12 different disappearances, sexual assaults, and murders of women from the early to mid-1980s. And his crimes took him all around the world. Yeah, believe it or not, he was actually put on probation in 1980 for sexual assault, but he was still allowed to visit Australia, where he was originally from. And while he was there, he was charged with kidnapping and sexually assaulting two underage girls. His parents bailed him out and he was set to return for his trial. And it gets worse from there because apparently his whole thing was to pretend to be a photographer. He would find beautiful young women and offer them what he called modeling sessions. Ugh. He would lure them into a false sense of security and then he would attack them. He was also considered a suspect in the disappearance of Mary Optiz, Rosario Gonzalez, and Elizabeth Kenyon. But they were never truly able to find out the full extent of his crimes because he was killed by police in a shootout in 1984. The family of Tammy Lynn did file a lawsuit against him before his death, but at the end of it all, police were never actually able to link the two, and as far as we know, Christopher Wilder didn't begin killing women until about a year after Tammy Lynn went missing. Does this rule him out? Well, it's kind of up to you, but he isn't allowed to confess, so it's hard to say if there will ever be any new information about him. And honestly, this guy seriously sucks. Yep. We're probably going to cover him in the future because what he did get up to that we know about was absolutely heinous. And speaking of heinous, that brings us to our next suspect, John Brennan Crutchley, also known as the Vampire Rapist. What a name. Charming, right? Jesus. We hate to say it, but we've also added him to our list of future monsters to cover. Along with being incredibly creepy looking, he was an absolute demon of a human being. Yeah, let's just say that he definitely earned that nickname. There wasn't much to tie him to Tammy Lynn other than the fact that he was active in Florida around the same time. He ended his own life while in prison in 2002 and was considered a suspect in numerous disappearances and murders, many of which still were never proven. 
So you're probably thinking by now that we really don't have a ton of suspects to go off of. And you're exactly right. That's what makes this case so freaking frustrating. Where did Tammy Lynn go? Did someone take her? Did she leave somewhere on her own free will? We legitimately have no clue. But a person can't just vanish. Someone out there must know something. So now that we have our main suspects out in the open, we're left with even more questions. So let's explore some of the strange theories and claims regarding this case. First of all, there are so many people who believe that Tammy Lynn may have been pregnant around the time that she went missing. Some go as far as to say that she vanished while trying to get an abortion, but there's no definitive proof regarding this. With that, let's take it back to something that Walter Leibowitz mentioned, money laundering. Yeah, so this is a theory that quite a few people believe due to the fact that people around Tammy Lynn heard her talk about the fact that she had seen something that she shouldn't. She also made numerous mentions about large-scale drug operations and the money laundering. She claimed that these operations involved many high-up people and the fact that she knew this put her in danger. This one makes me really wonder because, like, she came back from that party a completely different person. She, it was a huge Hollywood weekend long party. And I mean, like, come on. By this point, we know a lot more about the predatory nature of Hollywood. Oh, for sure. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, ugh, like, but the idea that she saw something or that something happened to her there doesn't really shock me. It's terrible to say, but she wouldn't be the first young actress to meet her end in Hollywood. It is a dark and terrible place. Absolutely. And the fact also that it was her first time being at something like this, like unchaperoned, and oh, it, it really makes your mind wonder what it was that went on. Uh, as for the police report Tammy Lynn was supposed to have filed, apparently there is absolutely no record of it ever existing. There are some who believe that Tammy Lynn is still alive and that she's living under a different identity as part of a witness protection program. And if that's the case, we're probably never going to know. Linda Curtis openly criticized the police because of how they handled the case. She said that they treated her like a runaway and that they mishandled the entire investigation. It always makes me so mad when police see a young girl who's gone missing and they automatically jump to the teenage runaway conclusion, especially when her friends and family, they say that this would be completely out of character. Should it be considered a possibility? Sure. Like, I mean, everyone has secrets that they don't always share with their folks, but it shouldn't be the final conclusion. Like, mm -hmm. it happens to so many women and girls that go missing, and it's very rarely the actual case. Definitely. And especially because you're right, it does seem to be the final answer that they have, but it's like the only answer that they have. And as well, also on the flip side of that, it doesn't matter if she was running away all the time or that she was a troubled teen. It's like yes. she's still a person who is missing. Find her. Like, Help her. Hello. Yes. Linda also claimed that Tammy Lynn was quote unquote, very afraid of the last man who saw her and that police didn't properly investigate him. This again would have been Keith. Investigators did, however, state that they did the best they could and he was never considered a suspect. Police did receive two phone calls from a woman who claimed that she knew Tammy Lynn. The first time she said that she was fine and that she would contact them when the time was right. The second time she called, she said that Tammy Lynn was finally doing what she had always wanted, going to school to be a nurse. This was around the two-year mark after she went missing, and around this time, detectives were reported as saying that they believed that she had just run away. However, her mom Linda refused to believe her daughter would ever do such a thing, especially considering that Tammy Lynn had literally never talked about wanting to be a nurse. She was also absolutely petrified of blood, which makes sense given the reaction to the scene she saw when she was filming Scarface. Like, it just, yeah, it doesn't make sense at all. It makes no sense. But her sister claimed that Tammy Lynn had three different social security numbers. 
which is kind of weird, obviously. And to some, it seems like this theory is actually the most likely. But I also think sometimes it's easier to accept that something like this happened rather than that she is gone. Yeah, absolutely. It's for some folks, it's their way of finding kind of closure when there is none, you know? Yeah. Sadly, her mom began to believe that Tamulin was either no longer alive, or if she was, she had no clue where she was. Either way, she had lost hope that her daughter would somehow come home safe to her. But she vowed to continue her search. Years passed, and eventually Tamulin's case appeared on the hit show Unsolved Mysteries. And listen, I highly urge you all to watch the episode, if anything, to put some faces to all of these names, but also because Robert Stack is one of the greatest TV show hosts of all time. When the show aired, there were tips called in, but not a single one proved to be useful. At this point, Linda's health had begun to deteriorate, and her only wish was to find out what happened to her daughter before she passed away. She was interviewed one last time after she was rejected for a liver and kidney transplant. She made one final appeal to the public, saying, There's always the possibility that someone will feel sorry for me. I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me. But if that's what it takes to get the right person to come forward, then that's okay. I won't be able to bring charges against anybody. I just want to know. Linda Curtis passed away a little over a month later with no new information about her daughter. And I want to clarify something just in case we have folks listening who are familiar with the case. Yes, there are rumors of fights and even abuse between Tammy Lynn and her mother. I looked and looked and looked and I couldn't find any actual proof of this, which is why we aren't discussing those theories any further. That's out of respect for her family and there just isn't enough evidence to even entertain it. Like her mother wasn't perfect. We know that. But honestly, it she had nothing to do with this and too many people were attacking her online for nothing. I can see why people might come to the conclusion that her mom had something to do with it, given that parents who are their kids' managers are often seen as having very toxic relationships. Yeah. But in this case, it really doesn't seem like that was a factor at all. I personally don't think her mom had anything to do with this. There are a lot of potential theories here, and I think we can both probably agree that investigators maybe could have asked a few more questions when it came to certain suspects. But as far as we know, we have legitimately no clue what happened to Tammy Lynn. We would love to believe that she somehow is still alive. But as the 40th anniversary of her disappearance approaches, it doesn't seem like we're going to get answers anytime soon. Her sister runs a Facebook group where she makes the occasional post regarding her sister and asking people to speak out if they know anything. And honestly, someone out there has to know something. There is another suspect that was mentioned in some of our research, but unfortunately there's not really a ton of proof when it comes to him, so we are choosing to omit his name due to the fact that We didn't find enough information where we felt comfortable really getting into mentioning him. Mm -hmm. There kind of are no legitimate suspects here. Or if there are, they were missed or probably just never even considered suspects to begin with. It's really frustrating, honestly. (laughs) Yeah, seriously. And it's honestly just heartbreaking that Linda Curtis died without finding out what happened to her daughter. There are some claims out there that an ex-boyfriend murdered her, but again, there's just no proof. It's frustrating. Like, even working on an episode like this is so hard because I think we both really go out there to find the truth and we work hard to get as much information as possible when it comes to the cases that we cover. But, like, this time we have no clue what the truth is and there's barely any actual proof. Like, that's why this case breaks my heart. There's always kind of those cases which are technically unsolved, but the evidence is so strong in one way or another that you can make some pretty sure assumptions on who might have done it. Yeah. This case doesn't give anyone an inkling of closure. There's like that obvious hope that Tammy Lynn did go into some kind of witness protection and is, you know, fingers crossed living her best life under a different identity. But I highly doubt that that's really the case. We do ask that anyone with theories or other information that we can explore to just send it our way because we want to know. Like, if we missed anything, 
let us know and we'll do an update episode. And obviously mm-hmm. the same goes for any of our cases. We yeah. we always we do our best to get as much information as possible. But like this time, it was really hard. And I mean, of course, if you have any of your own ideas, we want to hear those too. There is one more thing about this case that I want to bring up. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, does this actually mean anything? I don't know. You tell me what you guys think. But <laughs> in 2003, an actress named Lana Clarkson was murdered by the appalling Phil Spector, who many Ugh, of you may yeah. have heard of. Nasty. So here's the thing. Lana and Tammy Lynn have a few things in common. The obvious being their appearance, but they were also both in Scarface. Like, does that mean anything? I don't know. But the number of actresses that have met their end way too soon in the film industry is absolutely obscene. The Like, the people that do this, they're rich, they're powerful, and they're protected. And it's honestly something that I think is a lot darker than you and I could even begin to imagine. Uh, Yeah, Hollywood is a scary place and it basically has been since its very beginning. There's been so many unsolved Hollywood mysteries going back to like, you know, the 1920s and even earlier. Yeah, absolutely. That being said, after this, if you want to hear another tragic story of a Hollywood starlet, check out episode five, The Black Dahlia Murder. Yeah, going back almost that 50 episodes ago. Dang. (laughs) And speaking of, we do have a ton of really awesome episodes lined up for all of you. And as always, if you have something you want us to cover, just reach out on Twitter, Instagram, wherever you want. You can also email us at thegrimcurriculum at gmail.com. We love hearing from you guys. Yeah, the next episode coming up is one of my personal favorites because, just a little spoiler alert, Luckily, no one dies in it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's got a ha- happy ending to it in a in a way. Yeah, yeah. And then after that is one of my favorite episodes. Like we have so much good stuff yes. lined up. Like I am good so excited coming. And yeah. of course, we are always accepting your guys' story submissions for our Grim Encounters episodes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, do we have anything else to go over today? Um, I guess we have some new merch in the store up on Etsy, as well as a ton of new content coming your way always. Um, Got some extra credit stuff lined up and all that good stuff too. So I'm excited for those as well. Make sure you're following us wherever you listen. And don't forget to interact with our post, please. Yeah, likes, shares, comments, all that stuff is free and it helps us grow. Seriously, it's like really small, but if you like us, that kind of thing means the world and it helps. Yes, uh, if you want to support us a little bit further, you can do so by checking out our Etsy and our Patreon. And it is that time we want to say thank you to our Grim VIPs and up. A huge thank you to the wonderful Lisa, Johnny, Pink Flamingo 20, Hillary, Mudkip, Bob, and Brian. Honestly, you guys are the bomb.com. Seriously, that kind of thing means the world to us, and it really, really helps us grow a lot. Oh, and also on YouTube, just in case you didn't know by now, we hang out over on YouTube every Saturday at 12 p.m., MST to discuss our episodes. So if you subscribe to the channel, watch some videos, get some notifications going, it all helps out. Yeah, out of all of our platforms, YouTube has been the toughest to grow on. So go show us some love. But I'm gonna just like say, Charlotte and I just had a conversation about this the other day. And I'm just gonna say I am still very, very proud of our growth on YouTube. But it would be awesome to see more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. To keep up with all of our latest Grim Curriculum news, make sure you follow us on all the social media platforms. We'll link all our personal stuff below, too, if that's something that floats your boat. Thanks for listening. This has been The The Grim Grim Curriculum. Curriculum. Dina, did you know that fir trees can grow in human lungs? Oh. Yeah, a 28-year-old patient initially thought that he had a tumor in his lung, but when doctors investigated further, they found he had inhaled a fir tree seed and it began to grow inside of him. Oh man, that doesn't make me want to go outside. No, it reminds me of the episode of the Rugrats where Angelica makes them (laughs) eat watermelon seeds and they all think that the watermelons are going to grow inside them. Oh, that was a nightmare of mine. Oh my god. Okay, (laughs) bye guys. Bye.